Hi gang, I'm my radar meteorologist Matt Capucci. It seems like something you'd see on another planet. Chunks of ice the size of bowling balls falling from the sky. Some might leave craters, with others crashing through rooftops or smashing windows. Odds are you've never seen it, and you probably never want to. We're talking about the biggest and worst hail on Earth. By the way, if you're joining us on YouTube, be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Severe weather season is ramping up. We have all the explainers for everything you want to possibly learn ahead of the storms. Hail is a frequent accompaniment to severe thunderstorms in North America. Most hail is little, the size of peas or BBs. Sometimes you get penny-sized hail in once in a while larger. When the hail gets the size of golf balls or larger, it can start having a serious impact. Once in a while, hail bigger than baseballs will lay siege to buildings and cause a devastating impact. But how does hail form? How big can it theoretically get? And where are you most at risk? Let's break down the science behind the stones. Despite being made of ice, hail forms in thunderstorms usually during the summertime. It's not to be confused with sleet or grapple. Those are types of wintry precipitation. Hail requires a strong thunderstorm updraft to form. Even if it's 100 degrees outside, you can still get hail if you have a strong enough thunderstorm. You just need a storm that's tall enough to reach sub-freezing temperatures high aloft in the atmosphere. At the top of the strongest thunderstorm anvils, temperatures can reach minus 60 degrees. That's usually about 10 to 12 miles above the ground. Just having cold temperatures up there isn't good enough, however. You need to get raindrops in the cloud high enough to freeze. That requires an updraft or upward moving air to carry the raindrops aloft. If the updraft is weak, it can't suspend the growing hailstones for too long. They may fall to the surface when they're only penny size and maybe even melt before hitting the ground. If you ever get those giant raindrops that splat in the ground during a thunderstorm, that might be melted hail. Getting bigger hail means that a stone is in the cloud for longer growing bigger, which requires a stronger updraft. You need air moving upward fast enough to support the biggest stones. When you start talking baseball size hail, it's probably an 80 to 100 mile per hour updraft. Unsurprisingly, the same storms that often produce the biggest hail frequently contain tornadoes. We call these supercells. Supercells are rotating thunderstorms. That rotation is key in helping brew the giant hail. Rotation requires wind shear, or a change of wind speed and or direction with height. Wind shear also causes rotating storms to tilt a little bit. Warm air enters and spirals upward through the updraft, but by the time it comes down with rain and hail, the downdraft is farther downstream. That separation is key to allowing the storm to live longer. If the storm was straight up and down, the downdraft would choke off the updraft and kill the storm. We call these pulse-type storms. A spinning storm is also helpful because it limits the extent to which rain and hail fall together. When that happens, you can more quickly melt a hailstone. Hail is most common in the months of March, April, and May in the United States. Big hail, that is. The most severe thunderstorms occur in the springtime months when the upper atmosphere is still cold as winter retreats. By summertime, you can still get hail, but it's warmer upstairs. That means bigger hail is tougher to come by. Here's a map showing the annual risk of any hail. You can see it's most prevalent on the plains in the springtime. The Carolinas also see decent amounts of hail, especially in the lee of the Appalachians. There's also a lot of hail in Colorado, unsurprisingly because they're a mile in the atmosphere. It's easier for hail to hit the ground there before it melts. Now we switch to significant hail, or hail bigger than two inches across. We see a bit of a shift farther south. The Red River Valley of Oklahoma and adjacent Texas near the Panhandle takes the cake. That's because they see their storms earlier in the season when there's more cold air at high altitudes. I do think this chart underestimates hail risk along the U.S.-Mexico border in West Texas. We're talking the Permian Basin, Trans-Picos, and the South Texas Plains. Del Rio, Texas, a border city about 35,000 people, roughly 150 miles west of San Antonio, gets baseball-sized hail seemingly annually. Now here's a graphic I really like. Number of days with severe hail within 25 miles of a point. Some places in the plains get five or more days every year with big hail nearby. If we switch to hen egg or larger sized hail, it becomes a roughly annual thing. Imagine being a farmer and knowing there was a good chance egg-sized hail would pummel and pelt your neighbor's fields or your field once a season, give or take. Hence why farming is a challenging business. So how big can hailstones get? There will be a theoretical maximum of how fast an updraft can be, but there have been some mammoth-sized hailstorms in the United States. The national record comes from Vivian, South Dakota. On July 23, 2010, an 8-inch hailstone fell. That's somewhere in between volleyball and basketball sized. Unsurprisingly, the stone weighed nearly two pounds. That's enough to kill you. 
Hailstones reportedly crashed through people's roofs. The National Weather Service estimated the updraft was likely in the range of 160 to 180 miles per hour to support that mammoth thing. And check out this hail divot left in someone's deck. It's probable that hailstones were falling at near 130 miles per hour or faster. And here's the craziest part. The hailstone may have been even bigger, but the man who retrieved it said his power was out, so likely ablated and melted a little bit in the 24 hours it took to measure. The man named Les Scott had told the local CBS affiliate he planned to make a daiquiri out of the stone, but the station's meteorologist talked him out of it. That remains the official world record, but there may have been a wider hailstone in Cordoba, Argentina on February 8, 2018. Cordoba is home to about 1.5 million people, and they're extremely prone to large destructive hail. Believe it or not, Argentina gets their fair share of supercells. Initial estimates suggested stones in the 8 to 9 inch diameter range. They were pretty spiky. Researchers at Penn State use photogrammetry, or trigonometry that allows them to estimate the size of objects using a video, to pinpoint how big that hail may have been. They reviewed footage of the hailstorm taken in the Carlos Pass neighborhood. Here's some of that original footage shared from Guarniza, Cordoba. Fortunately, the same individual hailstone was recorded from two different angles, which you see here. That makes a huge difference in allowing photogrammetry to be possible. Professor Matt Kumjian determined the hailstone was likely between 18.8 and 23.7 centimeters in diameter. That's roughly between 7.4 and 9.3 inches. Here's a frame by frame. They reviewed each video frame digitally and drew the longest vertex to estimate the maximum visible dimension. Probabilistically, it was most likely in the 8.5 inch diameter range. This stone probably didn't weigh as much as that in Vivian, South Dakota because it was spiky. That indicates wet growth. Wet growth occurs when larger hailstones ascend through an updraft more slowly than smaller, more lightweight ones. If the bigger stones are wetter on the edge from warmer air at lower levels, smaller stones can stick to the wet edges and freeze. That makes the spikes. Hailstorms can quickly become billion dollar disasters, especially when they pass over populous metropolitan areas. A tornado might only be a few hundred feet wide, have a small footprint, so its damage path is limited. A three mile wide hail core, however, might knock out all the windows on 100,000 cars. If all the body panels are damaged too, the car gets totaled by insurance companies. Trust me, I know. Consider Texas, for instance. The Lone Star State has had three dozen $100 million disasters from severe thunderstorms in the past 25 years. Only five of them were from tornadoes. 29 were from something not usually taken as seriously, hail. More importantly, if populations keep expanding and cities continue to grow laterally, the targets are getting bigger. It won't be long before we have billion dollar hailstorm disasters on a seemingly annual basis going forward. On April 29, 2021, a trio of serious hailstorms hit San Antonio, Fort Worth, and Norman, Oklahoma. All three brought hail the size of tennis balls or larger and battered major population centers. The bombardment easily exceeded a billion dollars in losses. Personally, I've been very fortunate to avoid the biggest hail before. On May 22, 2020, I was in Burke Burnett, Texas, where I encountered this rotating mothership supercell. It was unbelievable looking, but it dropped CD-sized hail six inches in diameter on the town, vying for a Texas state record. Meteorologists refer to six-inch hailstones as gargantuan. Yes, it's actually a technical term. Here's some baseball-sized hail I got from a similar storm later on that evening. Identifying hailstorms on radar can be tricky sometimes. That's because conventional radar reflectivity only shows us how much water mass is falling. A thick spattering of raindrops might look the same as one or two giant hailstones. That's why we have to look at other signatures. One of my favorite go-tos is the hail spike. We also call it a three-body scatter spike. What happens is that you have big or wet hail, and there's so much of it that the radar beam takes a longer path back to the radar. Rather than bouncing off the hail and going directly back to the radar, it hits the hail, then some's reflected back to the ground, and then goes back to the radar. Because it takes more time to go in a longer path length, the radar thinks there's precipitation farther away than there actually is, resulting in a spike on radar. Here's an example from Phillips County, Kansas, when baseball size hail struck on July 26, 2008. Here's another great example from Weld County, Colorado. We also sometimes have to refer back to knowledge about the atmosphere. If we have a lot of cape or energy for upward motion in the hail growth region, i.e. above the freezing layer, we know we could have an updraft supportive of big hail. Once in a while, you can have a storm that produces hail but very little rain. We call these LP or low precipitation supercells. 
I got one north of Colby, Kansas in 2021. It went unward for more than a half hour, despite producing hail up to lime size, simply because it didn't look impressive on radar. ALP supercells are tricky to warn and detect. By the way, one last fun fact. Carico, Kenya is the hail capital of the world. They can average a 50 days of hail annually. One year, they got 132 days. It helps that they sit at 7,200 feet elevation on a plateau. Hail season is about to ramp up in a big way across the lower 48, but fortunately, my radar's got you covered. In the coming weeks, we'll be giving you some explainers on how to use the app to your advantage when storms roll in. Remember, we've got you covered every step of the way. Follow my radar on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download my radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.